and always trust that anybody think God is a worthy God, I think God is a worthy God. I think God is a worthy God. You give God glory and honor and praise for being a worthy God. God is a worthy God. He's He's worthy, amen. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all glory. He's truly worthy of all honor, amen. And truly right now, we give him the glory. We give him the honor. We thank him for what he is doing in our lives, amen. How many of y'all can see without a doubt that the Lord is blessing me right now? Right now, amen. Amen. We thank God for that, amen. We thank God for that. We truly give God glory and honor to, to God the Father, to Jesus the Son, and to the blessed Holy Ghost. We thank God. We thank God for the three in one. Amen. I thank God that God thought of that. Amen. Because it takes all three of them to keep me. Amen. I don't know about y'all. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We just give God glory and honor. We just give God praise for our leadership here today. Amen. Amen. We always thank God for leadership. Amen. As we as they help us guide and navigate these rocky places, amen. These different places. Amen. These places that we've never been before. We thank God for godly leadership, godly um spiritual leadership, godly um tr trustee and stewardship leadership. Amen. And all those that take part in making this happen. Thank God for the ushers and those checking temperatures and those seeking the folk. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. 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 We thank God for the folk that are here. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank God, brother. Y'all pick up with some different stuff. Amen. Can't sit kind of where you wanna. Amen. Can't sit as close as you would like to. For some of us, Amen. And we got, got to wear these masks, Amen. But God is still on the throne. We thank God. And I tell you what, though, you came to church this morning. You got your workout in this morning. Can DJ Shea Boo put it on you for the opening for the opening bell? Uh, some of y'all, some of y'all about my age was like, y'all remember them days at house party when they started playing the disco LP? Amen. And the song lasts like 10 minutes. I mean, what in the world? What in the world going on? This song lasts a long time. I know some of y'all was thinking about it, but this praise break, woo. I need a break, amen. <laughs> but look, wasn't that praise good for your soul, amen? Thank God. If I had to pull out the tambourine this morning. Yeah, Amen. Right. I tell you, I felt like I felt like I was back in St. Joseph holding this church on the eastern shore of Virginia. Amen. Who was getting me? Amen. If we just thank God. Come on, somebody, happy praise God. I sure the spirit is already here. Amen. The spirit is already here. We're gonna pray to God that God opened up your hearts and minds today uh, to get this word that He got. For how many of y'all ready for a word today? Amen. Amen. I'm ready for a word today. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna call your attention, Amen, to the book of Zechariah. Amen. Somebody say, Zach who? Zechariah. Amen. Zechariah. Amen. Look, look. If you're flipping in your Bible, go go to the New Testament, go to Matthew, and then go back. Amen. It's easy to find it like that. Amen. Because because um, Zechariah is the next to the last book of the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. So if you can find Matthew, you can find Zechariah. If you can find Malachi, you can find Zechariah. Amen. It's, it's the next to because Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. And Zechariah is the next to the last book of the Old Testament. And we're going to be looking at um, chapter 9. Amen. Chapter 9, verses um, 11 through 16. Amen. Chapter 9, verses 11 through 16. Amen. We're going to see what thus saith the Lord today. Um, help me out. Help me out. Help me honor God if you can by standing to your feet once you've found it. Amen. I got some Bible scholars up in here. Amen. Or oh, 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 y'all good at following clues. Amen. Which one? Amen. Well, we thank God for it. Come on, y'all. Let's read. Starting at verse 11. <clears throat> and as for thee also, by the blood of the covenant, I have sent forth. I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope, even today. Do I declare that I will render, render double unto thee. And when I have bent Judah for me, and filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against the sons of Greece, and made thee as a sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with, with whirlwinds of the south. Uh, the Lord of hosts 
shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue uh, with sling stones. And they shall drink and make a noise as, as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord, and the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. May the Lord ever add a blessing to the reading of his, of his word, sanctify it in our hearts, and therefore making it really good for our souls. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us, let us look to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, right now. God, we thank you, God, for a preaching time. And God, we pray, God, for the type of anointing that's going to make preaching easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that's going to make hearing your word easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that's going to make doing your word real easy. And now, God, God, we come before you, God. God, just praying, God, that you just anoint us afresh, that we'll be able to preach your word from on high. God, let me put it where they can get it. God, 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 you step forward and I step back. God. Let them see not of me, but all of thee, God. Let them hear your mighty voice uh, and this word to your people. And God, while you're partnering with us uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the power of your anointing, all oh, partner with me, God, in the covering of your covenant. Cover me, O oh God, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, uh, that the devil will know whose we are and who. Not to mess with her. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And let the household of faith say, Amen. Amen. Today, for our time together in the Word of God, I just want to preach another message from the series. It's all about growth. And I want to center this preaching moment on this sermon title. It's called Don't Tap Out. Amen. Don't tap out. Amen. Can I tell you today that to, to tap out uh, is a sports term that means to give up, uh, to say uncle, to say I quit, to say no more, no moss, uh, or to submit. It means that you have been overpowered, beat up, and beat down to the point that, that, that rather than to risk more embarrassment or injury, you simply just choose to give up. Uh, in the world of sports, to tap out uh, is the ultimate uh, indignity. It means that an outside force, another person, has imposed their will on you to the extent uh, that you felt like quitting was your best option. Uh, it is one thing to lose a game or to be outplayed or even to have someone intervene in the contest to stop it, but to quit, to tap out, can I tell somebody that's a tough pill to swallow? And let me share this. Once you quit the first time, it's easier to quit the next time. See, when faced with those those circumstances again, it is even easier to give in than to try to go through. Amen. It is easier, easier to give up rather than to stand up and fight. It is easier to tap out than to tap into the resources at your disposal. What tapping out shows as much as anything is a lack of determination, a lack of commitment, a lack of focus, and a lack of resolve. Tapping out then does not seem to be the move that you would want to make. And can I tell you, if tapping out in the sports world is bad, where all we are talking about losing is a game or a contest, something that we're playing for, for a trophy, a prize, or even some money, maybe some bragging rights. If all we are talking about is is a spectacle put on put on for the entertainment and delight of some fans, where what is at stake does not really matter in the grand scheme of life and living, then how much more is tapping out not the best option or a good move or a good look for those that are yet still serving the Lord? Come on, somebody. This is why that we should be striving to grow in the Lord. See, when you are not growing, it'll tell on you. When you have come under the attack of the enemy, see, when you are failing to grow, you are a prime candidate 
to tap out. Amen. Or can I tell somebody hearing about growth won't cause you to grow? Being around those that are growing won't cause you to grow. Saying that you're growing won't do it either. Amen. You got to receive the word, obey the word, and apply the word of the Lord in order to grow strong enough to be able to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And to not tap out. Amen. Can I tell you, in this battle that we are in with our adversary, our enemy, our spiritual opponent, the devil, this is real, y'all. We're in a real battle, y'all. We are in more, it's more than a game with our enemy. We're in spiritual war. Amen. We have we, we, we are engaged in spiritual warfare. Therefore, we need to have some spiritual weaponry. Amen. The Bible lets us know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. But can I tell you, you ain't pulling down no strongholds if you tap out. Amen. See, look, can I tell you, it's a war that has real consequences, real outcomes, real casualties, real damage to be felt seen and dealt with uh, in this world uh, and the eternal world to come. Uh, church, let me tell you, uh, believers are tapping out to the enemy all over the place. And in all aspects and levels uh, of this spiritual fight, amen. Can I tell you, uh, preachers are tapping out in the pulpit, amen. Uh, and not preaching the pure and full gospel. Not standing on the word. Not saying what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and they think that that compromise uh, will give them a greater membership uh, and more job security. But well, church, can I tell you, uh, if you're acting like that, uh, that's tapping out. Uh, church leaders are tapping out uh, by not living. Living what they demand others to live, not living according to the standards that God has set and made possible to accomplish to the word, to the work and word of Jesus Christ on the cross and at his resurrection. Look, can I tell somebody that Pharisee spirit is alive and well in some churches? Amen. It's among those that want a position but don't want the power. Come on, somebody. They want a position but don't want the power to the spirit to be evident in their lives because they know that real power from God uh, come with real commitment uh, to God's will, God's will, ways, and purpose. Uh, church, can I tell you anything less uh, is tapping out? Uh, and, and I dare not leave out the members uh, and fellow believers in the church uh, that are tapping out um, um, by living any old way outside of the church uh, and not being an effective witness of the power of God, uh, making up their own reasons uh, for lack of compassion compliance to the word of God uh, that is available to them. Uh, turning their back on sound teaching uh, and rather flock to the places uh, where their sins can be sugarcoated uh, and excused uh, rather than to change. Uh, catch the vision. Uh, catch the vision of God uh, and be delivered. If you're acting like that, uh, that's tapping out. The believers are tapping out because not only are they giving up on themselves in this fight against the enemy, but they're giving up on God and the power of God to heal, deliver, and set free according to his word. Church, wherever this is going on, somebody need to go ahead and count to three. Ring the bell because the devil has already won. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, you ain't got to tap out. They know the enemy want to tap you out. He want to cause you to quit. But you ain't got to quit. You can hang on in there. In Jesus' name, I'm here to tell you, church, it does not have to be so. The Lord God does not want to see you tap out to the enemy. And what he puts your way, you do not have to quit believing in God under any circumstances. Can I tell somebody, you can win. You can can make it. You can have the complete and unconditional victory that you need. And God has ordained for you. In 1 John 4 and 4 it says this, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, church. We can make it. If the guests don't tap out See, our text today is going to show you and I how we can learn not to tap out, but go on through, get on through, 
come on over in Jesus' name. The first thing I want to tell you today, for you to make it today, is this. You have to know that God has made a coming promise with you. And the, can I tell somebody, in the book of Zechariah, it was a book written to encourage the people of God in their faith. Can I tell you, they had been in exile in Babylon for 70 years. And God had placed a prophet there to sustain them with a word from God throughout that ordeal. Somebody better get that. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're going through. Your God is still looking to take care of you. Come on, somebody. At the dark day, at the dreary day, at the weary night, at the lonely time, nights full of fright. Can I tell you, God, God has put a word near your mouth. God has put a word in your heart. God put a word in your mind. God has raised up somebody. It might be so Somebody walking down the street, you ain't never seen them before, and God called them to give you a word. You might be sitting in a doctor's office, and somebody just smiled at you and tell you it's gonna be all right. I'm gonna tell you whatever exile you might have found yourself in, whatever place that ain't been all together lovely. I guarantee you that if you believe in the Lord, the Lord will provide a word to encourage you. Come on, come on, somebody. I want you to understand that. And now, and now that they got through that part, then that is back in the land of their forefathers. But things look rough all around. Things are looking mighty bleak. Stuff been tore down. Stuff been tore up. They got some work to do. They still got some enemies to fight. But they don't want to go forward. They don't want to rebuild the temple. They don't want to follow the ways of God. Can I tell you, they came through all that. And now they still want to tap out. They feel like that they have gone through enough. And they're sick and tired of going through. Anybody ever felt like that? They're just tired of going through. I'm tired of waking up every morning. And I see the report on the news. I see the ticker going up. How many people have died today? How many people have got sick yesterday? How many people are facing hospital late? hospitalization today. I'm tired of it. I'm ready for this to be over. I'm here to tell you they might feel like you might feel like tapping out but don't tap out. You might say this is too much for anyone for anyone to take them. But can I tell you God sees you and God is coming to your rescue. You just gotta remember don't tap out. Can the Lord send you Send a fresh word to them. Mm. Anybody ever been hot on an evening? And it's been hot all day. But all of a sudden you feel a fresh breeze. A fresh breeze. A fresh breeze. A fresh breeze come on. Oh God. You know how that fresh breeze. It'll just refresh you. It'll make you oh God. Why I want to talk to you, girl. Oh yeah, God. Sometimes you just need a fresh breeze. It'll come and refresh you. When you think you can't go no further, when you think you done did it all, sometimes it's the Holy Ghost. He'll bring a fresh breeze and make everything feel, feel all right. Come on, somebody. And so can I tell you what the Lord did for the children of Israel? Over the ninth chapter of Zechariah, he said a fresh word. Can I tell you that fresh word? It's like a fresh breeze. It'll make you feel all right. He sent a fresh word to them. And you know, sometimes you just need a fresh word from the Lord. A fresh word will make the difference. Oh, I thank God. I thank God for a fresh word. Jesus called it our daily bread. Come on, somebody. Ah, to our daily bread will refresh our soul. Let there be a lesson in him. No matter what we've been through, it's no excuse to tap on them. Because God always got a fresh word for you. What we face today does not have to be, and look, does not have to have an accumulation effect on us. What we faced yesterday got no bearing on today. Why? Because the Bible tells us in Lamentations, amen, 3, 22 and 23, it is the Lord's, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because of his compassion, they fail not. They are new every morning. 
Great is thy faithfulness. Somebody said it like this. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Come on, somebody. Let the fresh love, oh God. Let that fresh, let that fresh spirit, let that fresh word fall all over you. Come on, somebody. Weeping may endure for a night. Somebody say it with me. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Come on. Come on, somebody. Great is thy faithfulness. Then in the prayer, look, then Jesus taught this. In the prayer, when he taught his disciples how to pray, give us this day our daily bread. That's a promise, y'all. It's a promise of a fresh word. And I tell you, the Lord will give us what we need to make it every day. You don't have to chop out. You don't have to quit. The Lord has it all in his hands. And what these people needed to know, that yes, God had a plan. He had a plan to go along with the promises. A whole lot of folk can make promises, but ain't got no action behind it. Ain't got no plan. But I'm here to tell you, my God is a full service God. Not only do he have a promise, but he got a plan. They will bring it to pass. Come on. Uh, he said, I know the thoughts I have for you. Uh, I know the plans I have for you. Uh, the plans for your good uh, and not for your evil. Uh, to bring you to uh, an expected end. I'm here to tell you. Uh, God's got a promise to go along with his plan. Uh, watch this back up for just a minute. Uh, in Zechariah 9 and 9 foretells uh, the coming of the Messiah. Uh, can I tell you, uh, that sounds like a plan to me. Uh, the coming of the Messiah, the Savior of all the people uh, and for those uh, that are thinking about tapping out uh, not only is Jesus a way maker uh, but Jesus is a game changer come on uh, and look how the promise of the, of the coming of, of the Messiah uh, makes a difference uh, look at verse 11 as for thee also uh, by the blood of my covenant uh, I sent forth thy prisoners uh, out of the pit where there is no water uh, they were in a place amen uh, where they couldn't feel the spirit of God uh, but I have delivered you out of that place. Uh, see, sometimes the Lord got to pull you up uh, from around, oh God, you, yeah, you. Uh, sometimes God got to pull you up uh, from where you were. Uh, amen. Because you couldn't get the right reception uh, for what the Lord needed to do for you. Uh, so you was a prisoner trap. I know. I know a little bit about the story. You was a prisoner trap, amen. Uh, and couldn't feel the power. Couldn't get the right reception that you needed. Uh, but when the Lord picked you up, uh, put your feet on the solid ground, uh, Take you on a rock to stay. All of a sudden, the miracle and the blessing that he has for you can get to you. Come on, somebody. Help me shut that thing out. God said, I promise. God said, I promise I'll make a way out of no way. God said, I promise. Sometimes for God to make his promise come to pass in your life, you got to move some stuff. You got to delay some stuff. You got to stop some stuff. So you can grow some stuff up in you. promise is real. Amen. For it is sealed by the blood of the, of the Messiah. The promise is real for it is already in effect. So you already been, de been delivered. Don't you remember? Don't you remember the bondage of sin? The bondage that you was in? You've already been delivered. Don't tap out. Don't you remember how tough things were in the time of your trouble? Don't tap out. But now, now you're thinking about tapping out. I don't know who it is. Thinking about tapping out, can I tell you? Don't do it. Don't do it then. Don't do it now. Don't do it next week. Don't tap out. You got a word. Look, 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 look. Some of y'all getting a word today. And this word is going to help you not to quit today. But how about tomorrow? I want you to know that this same word, that this word, you need to meditate on this word. You need to meditate on this word. That God said, don't tap out. That God said, I've already sent the deliverer. 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 He is dispatched coming to you. Don't tap out. Don't you know you've been through the worst of it already? And you've already been delivered from the pit. The Lord showed up in the hope and in, in that hopeless situation to give you hope. So now you are no longer a prisoner of hopelessness. But now you are bound by the hope that you have in the Savior. Let me make this real plain for you today. To be a prisoner of hopelessness is to be bound.
bound by that situation, but to be a prisoner of the hope that you have in the Savior and the Messiah is to be covered by the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. How can I think about quitting when I know I'm under the blood of Jesus? Can I tell you today, if you receive the promise, you ought not to ever think about tapping out. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. And my next point, uh, can I tell you, uh, God will fight through you. Watch this. Uh, oh, this is some interesting stuff right here. Uh, the often a person will think about tapping out uh, or throwing in the towel because they believe uh, that there just ain't no more fight left in me. Uh, I done gave it all I got. Uh, I ain't got no more. Uh, and sports like wrestling or mixed martial arts or boxing, there's always a referee. Uh, and he's watching you. Amen. Uh, he's watching the opponents. Uh, you want to make sure that all parties are fit to fight and are fit to continue. Sometimes when folk get knocked down, the referee will stop everything around them and he'll get them up and he'll look and he'll see what city you're in. And if they can't after, he'll stop the fight. He'll look in their eyes and see if they glassed over. But sometimes you can be knocked out on your feet and he'll look at you to see if you can continue. Sometimes in the middle of a contest, they'll ask you even, do you want to continue? Do you want to quit uh, uh, in the match. Uh, you may not even want to tap up, uh, but if you don't show enough fight, uh, then the referee will quit for you. Uh, anybody ever felt like uh, the odds were just too great to fight on? Uh, so can't look, uh, nobody from my family has ever made it through school. Uh, I just as well quit. Uh, no one from my neighborhood uh, has ever made something of themselves. Uh, I just as well quit. Uh, I done made too many mistakes. Uh, I tried to overcome them. Uh, but I can't overcome her. I just as well quit. Or oh, why should I keep on trying to do the right thing? When well, it's much easier to do the crooked thing. And then to stay straight. I might as well give on in to these streets. And just quit. But I'm here to tell you today. Don't tap out. No matter how hard it looks. Because if you hold on. And if you hold out. The Lord will the Lord will be in the fight. He'll be in the fight first. Through you. Watch this. It's called the anointing. It's called the grace of God to do in you and do through you on that which you cannot do for yourself. Watch this. Verse 13. Verse 13 says, and when I have bent Judah for me and filled the bow with Ephraim. Can I tell you? <coughs> When you read it in the King James, it don't say it real plain. But look, but when I read it in the NIV, it said, I'll take Judah and I'll bend Judah like a bow. Come on, I'll bend Judah like a bow. What does that mean? Like a bow, like a bow. Amen. If you pull back the string, it said, I'll turn Judah. When Judah didn't think of a no more fight left in them, I will take Judah and I'll bend it like a bow. And I'll take Ephraim. I'll take Ephraim and I'll you Ephraim like an arrow huh? and I'll shoot the shot huh? that you couldn't shoot no more. Come on, huh? I just want to tell somebody about a holler for that one. God huh? said I'll shoot the shot huh? when you thought you didn't have no more shots huh? left in you. Huh? I'll be the shot. Huh? I'll be the shot. I want you to understand huh? but it looked like they had no more fight huh? and were about to tap out the anointing took over and the people yeah, they used them huh? like they had not been used in a long time. Huh? Oh God, huh? I just want to help somebody I mean, look, look all could be said, Lord, use me. We want the Lord to use me. But what we think sometimes, the Lord will use us, amen, that we might get a get some glory, uh, or we might get a blessing, but how about God use you uh, so you can be the blessing? Uh, how about when other folk all around you uh, are tapping out, uh, and you decide, uh, I ain't tapping out, uh, and you ain't got no more, God say, I got it all, uh, and I'll beat you like a bow, and shoot you like an arrow, uh, and I'll go forth like lightning, uh, and I will strike, uh, come on somebody, uh, you better get that, uh, oh God will use you, uh, look, uh, he'll use you, uh, and and the enemy might not never saw it coming. But the last time the enemy saw you, you was woe down. You was woe out. You was beat up. You was beat down. You were dead all level to the ground. But long as you got King Jesus. Come on. Long as I got King Jesus. Long, long, long. I don't need nobody else. You better get that. Oh, can I tell you the text says.
said uh, the Lord would bend the people like a bow uh, and use them uh, and use yeah. them amen uh, and God will cause up the victory uh, and God will raise up a mighty army uh, God say look uh, when they when look uh, when people that want to tap off see you uh, being used of God uh, God said I'll raise up an army uh, I'll get people encouragement I'll raise up the sons of Zion uh, against the enemy uh, and you shall be as a mighty sword uh, you able to cut right through the enemy uh, right when the enemy thinks uh, that, he, that you are ready to quit uh, if you don't tap out. Uh, the Lord will show up in you uh, and manifest his might to you. Uh, church, uh, don't forget, uh, don't tap out. Come on. Uh, and then my last point, uh, the last thing I want to tell you, tell you today uh, about not tapping out. Uh, if you don't tap out, uh, not only will the Lord fight in you, uh, but can I tell you, uh, the Lord will fight with you. Come on, uh, come on somebody. Uh, in verses 14 and 15, uh, amen. Uh, in verses 14 and 15, uh, it says, and the Lord shall be seen uh, over them, uh, and, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, uh, and the Lord shall blow the trumpet uh, and go with uh, the whirlwinds of the south. Uh, the Lord of hosts uh, shall defend them, uh, and they shall devour and subdue her with slain stones. Can I tell you, God said that he will go with you and fight. That God will look. If you don't tap out, the power of the Lord will be evident with you in the fight. Your success in the midst of the struggle will be seen by all. Sometimes folk in the world will try to equate with how much you're struggling to make it, to make it through with you not being being in the Lord as you should. They expect the weight of your struggle. Come on, somebody know what I'm talking about. They expect already the weight of your struggle. Maybe you've been going through some obscure things that most folk don't go through. Maybe you've been dealing with some stuff for a long time that most folk don't go through. And people looking at you like, mm, what's wrong with them? But what they ought to be doing is celebrating you. Because the devil ain't broke you yet. Come on. You say I must have been through a whole lot I've been through some mighty long days and some mighty tough nights. Been cold, been lonely, and you've been afraid, but you still yet held on to the promises of God. You kept on getting a daily word. You kept on getting a fresh anointing. You kept on getting another dose of the Holy Ghost. And you didn't give in. And you didn't break down. You didn't break down. And instead of folks looking at you and saying, I wonder what they did, they ought to be in celebration bring you because of what the Lord has done. Come on, somebody. Oh, God. Come on, somebody. Look, look what the Lord has done. See, so you need to let folks know her that you are not, that look, that if you're not praying for me, huh, just go ahead and leave me alone. Come on, huh, just go ahead and leave me alone. Huh. Amen. Huh. Just move out of my way. Huh. Don't try to stop me. Don't try to block me. Huh. I got a race to run, huh, and I'm running by faith. Amen. Huh. I want you to know huh, that if you ain't praying for me, huh, you look, leave me alone. You don't know what I'm going through, huh, and you don't know what I've been through. Huh. But don't sit up here huh, and try to judge me. Huh. You are not my Lord. Huh. My, my Bible says in Romans 4, 14 and 4, uh, that who art thou? Uh, who art thou that judge another man's servant? Uh, to his own master he standeth. Uh, to his own master he followed. Yea, he shall be held up. Uh, for God is able uh, to make him stand. Come on. Anybody be on God. Uh, maybe you've never heard that word before. Uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, but you've been living that. Uh, You've been looking at Romans 14 and 4 life huh? because you are, you belong to God. Huh? Somebody need to go ahead and shout that. Huh? I belong to God. Huh? Somebody need to go ahead and shout that. Huh? I belong to God. Huh? And He don't make me stand. Huh? Lord, lift me up. Huh? Lord, help me to stand. Huh? Oh God, I thank you, God. The church, you got to know that if you don't tap out in the midst of your hard times, sad times, and bad times, the Lord will show Himself to all to see that there's no quick in you. And then, and then this is what the verse I like. On verse 16, said this, and the Lord their God shall save them in that day. Look, the Lord can't save you if you don't already quit. Can I tell you, huh, if you don't tap out, huh, in that day the Lord shall save you, huh, and as a flock of his people, huh, for they shall be huh, as 